Okay guys, so we're going to make something like this that we can see right here. The thing is, the preview that you see is very, very time consuming. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And for the people who really want to make this, after all of the information that I've given you, I'm sure you can make it like the end result that you saw. Um, I will also include this blender file so you can go a little bit more into depth and see what I will do. For the sake of making this a little bit easier for beginners also to understand, I'll make this a bit shorter and we're only gonna make it one. So, let's just go into Blender and we're gonna delete our main cube and let's add a cylinder. So this cylinder, I don't want these end gons here because if you go into wireframe you can see that it's an end gon. You can already change it when you've added a cylinder. So I'm gonna do the cap fill to triangle fan. And I'm going to delete the bottom just so I don't need to put more bevels in there later on. Um, add another cylinder. The triangle fan is already selected here. And we're going to scale this one a bit down. So this is, let's say, the base, right? And we want, of course, to make a spring. So I'm going to hide these two. And I'm going to add a circle. So this circle is the beginning of our spring. And what is very important now is that when you rotate this, try to do it inside edit mode. So rotate for 90 degrees. And then we can move it a little bit outwards. And why do we do this in edit mode? Well, when we do it in edit mode, you can see that our origin still is in the middle. You can see this uh, orange dot. And because it is in the middle, our modifier, which is going to be the screw modifier, so what we can do now, we can actually screw it, as you can see, right? And not only can we screw it, we can make it longer with iterations. So we're going to do like five iterations. And the fun thing about this is you can still scale this up or down. So if we get all our other stuff up in here, you can see that it's of course way too big. I'm going to scale it a bit down. And I also think the spring itself is a bit too thick, so you can actually go into edit mode and you can just scale this down. Um, the only thing you gotta be wary of is that you gotta play with the screw again to uh, yeah, close or open them. So, very, very cool. And what we're gonna do is, let's give this a subdivision surface and I'm gonna bevel this top part here. So I will select them with Alt. Uh, Alt, left click, and then it selects the whole edge loop. Then Ctrl B to create a bevel, and I'm just gonna give it a few more edge loops with um, scrolling my uh, middle mouse button up. And then we have a nice bevel. Give it also a smooth shading, and we can do exactly the same here. Uh, I might even do it with a bevel modifier. Here, subdivision surface, bevel modifier, put an angle, and I'm gonna put a few more segments. Also give the smooth modifier and then that seems okay. This one has to go a little bit more to the bottom. And now it's time for us to animate this. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Just trying to make it look cool. Yeah, some of this will work. Okay, so let's animate this. Select it. We have our one here and we can insert a keyframe in the screw. Once we go up, so let's go into 11 frames, we just put the screw modifier up. So you can choose however much you want it. Uh, 1.47, that's okay. Insert keyframe. So what happens now this time, you can see that we get this animated form. And of course this one doesn't move with it. So we need to change something here. We also need to give this some keyframes. So E, location. And then around frame 11, it's reached end again. And we're gonna place it there, E, location. So in this time, it will move with our spring. Very, very cool. Now we have, of course, a ball on top, which is gonna be a UV sphere. Scale a bit down. Gonna smooth the vertices. And this ball is going to be animated as well, because this spring goes, right? So at frame 1, this is the keyframe that we need. 
And we're not only gonna do location, we're actually gonna do lock rod, which is location and rotation. Because in the animation that you saw, it also rotated and it just looks very cool if you have different materials on the same um, object. So lock rod, and then at frame 11, it would be at this height, but we want it to go a bit higher. So let's do it frame 30, GZ, and let's make it bounce a bit up. E lock, lock rod. So let's look at our animation and you can see that it doesn't really move the way that we want it, right? Um, our spring kind of goes through and then it bounces up. So this has to do with multiple things. First of all, we can maybe change this here, but I have a better idea and that is selecting all of our models, go into here and grab a graph editor. Click on A, and this makes you select all the animations, so all the uh, keyframes that we have. And if you go to key, you can see that we have an interpolation mode. And right now, our interpolation mode is soft. So it starts a bit slower and then it ends also in a softer fall off. off. And this makes them just, um, this is hard to make them work together, okay? So key, interpolation mode, linear so now the animation is linear and what will happen now is now we still have to move this one a little bit around but because it is linear once we find a good point it will just always be the way that we want it so around frame 32 it will work good for me and one and you can see that it moves up and there it is very very cool so we want to give this some materials right first thing i'm gonna do is go here and add a shader editor we can also get rid of this um, graph editor by the way and we can give this uh, some materials i'm just gonna do it very basic go into here and this base will have a i guess a bluish color And then it will be a little bit more glossy, a little bit more glossy. Um, and that is this blue base color. We can also give this blue base color to this material. <coughs> and this one will be a metallic color. So metal. This is going to be our spring and this is metal all the way up. And put it a little bit darker. Also the glossiness can be a little bit more glossy. So 0.2. And then we of course have our ball here. I also want to give this a metal color. So just go here. We can give this a new name. Which is going to be ball. And make sure the metal is all the way up. Metallic. <laughs> I actually want to give this a grunge map. So just add an image texture color goes into the roughness and we're gonna open our grunge map you can get it down below uh, it looks like this by the way like that and this uh, gives us some nice reflections you can always change these reflections with a color ramp in between so um, if you want it to be a bit more shiny you can see that we can make it expand. We can even make it less shiny if you really go into the scholars because it's a black and white note. You can uh, play around with that. So this doesn't really look nice yet, right? I'm going into cycles. And I want a nice HDRI in here. This will give us like 360 degrees lighting and it will really, really look uh, realistic. So go into your world tab. Add an environment texture. Color goes into the color. And we're going to open an HDRI. And I think I did this one. You can also get it down below. And here it already looks a little bit more interesting. The only thing I want to do is create a plane in the back. Plane. Rotate this for a 90 degrees. And scale this up. Move it here. And... The thing with this is, 
we want to give this a color, but we don't really want any shadows on here. So if you go into the object, we're going to give this a nice blue color. We're going to do this with an emission node. Okay, so delete the principal shader, add an emission node, emission. And let's do this a little bit lighter blue. And now if you look at this, there will be no shadows casted from this. There might be some emission, like uh, there might be some light casted onto all of these models, but it, that looks okay to me. And uh, I guess we're almost there. So the last thing that we want to do is we want some rotation in here and we also want a new material. So I'm going to select it and add a new material and I'm going to go in here and this new material. We're going to name this as ball blue. I'm going to delete these bits here. It will not be metallic. Roughness, maybe a little bit less rough, 0.3. And then we're going to give this a nice uh, blue. So don't do it too overboard. But something like this will be cool. So now it just gets replaced, right? If we actually go into our material tab, you can see that we can add another material. And let's make from this material our metallic ball again. So it's just going to be ball. And this material will make the ball blue. And you still can't see it. This is because we have to assign this. So if you go into edit mode, you can see that some options here turn up. I'm going to select the bottom vertice here, click on Ctrl plus a few times just to expand our selection. And now I'm going to assign this ball to blue. So now it has two materials. Very, very cool. The only thing that um, you might want to change is the rotation a little bit. If you go to frame 32, you can change some of the rotation. Just rotate it around E lock rod. So what happens now is if you bounce it up, it will have some nice rotations to it. The last thing that I did is I selected my camera and put all these values at zero. Then I move it out of here and rotate it for 90 degrees around the X axis. So we just point towards our model and then move it a bit out. We're going to frame one and we're going to line this up with our ball. If you want to line it up, you can go in here, camera, viewport display, composition guides, and we have a center uh, option here and this will make give you these lines. And now we can actually line it up a bit better. Here will be good. So now that this is lined up nicely, we can give this the same animation as our ball here. So E, so select our camera, E, Location, don't do lock rod, and then we go up and at around frame 32. I'm move this up somewhere around the middle, and then E location. So, also for this one, you can see that it moves a bit weird, and that it has the same reason as we had before. So, get your graph editor up in here. Graph, editor, select your camera here. And I'm also clicking A in this part to select all of our animations, key, interpolation mode and linear. So now it is linear and you can see that it moves the way up that we want. I hope you guys can show me some of the cool stuff that you've did with this and I'll see you guys in the next one.